Days to Years. We're so excited. We have a live audience. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm here with my awesome co host, Hagar. Angela. How you doing? Re- how are you? You ready to cook, babe? Yes. Okay, got a mask. I'm keeping, you say coffee. Coffee. We're going to have coffee. Coffee. Some coffee sauce. And cheesecake. And yeah. cheesecake. <laughs> cheesecake. We ain't got no cheesecake yet. I'm no, we don't have cheesecake. cheesecake. Sorry. Awesome. Sorry. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. And we're with our awesome co host, featured guest, Chef Cherry. And our whole episode, our whole episode today is it's on our how-to series. So our how-to series will probably be once every three months or once every four months. And for today's how-to series, it's how to meal prep for a family. And Chef Cherry has a meal prep for a family of four over five days using ingredients you can find at any grocery store. I like Whole Foods, that's where we went to to get groceries because I have rheumatoid arthritis and I have to be careful about the food that I put in my body because I don't take medication and I'm not on a biologic. So I use a lot of organic ingredients. So that's what I do, y'all do you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna turn it over to Chef Cherry. If you have questions, you know, just raise your hand okay. and yell it yeah. out, she'll answer them. Heather and I are just gonna be like her wing ladies. Yeah. Because we're not men. No, 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 no. no. We don't ladies. really know what we're doing because this is the first time we've done this. So time. yeah, we're winging it. We're winging it. We are wing ladies. We are wing ladies. Here we go. So without further ado, Chef Cherry. Go ahead. Well, welcome everyone for being here. Thank you. Um, so here we go. So I am a chef. I'm a personal chef. Before I was a personal chef, I am a teacher for students with disability. I have done that for 16 years. I am currently doing that as well. And I'm considering myself a traveling chef. I go different parts of the world with my clients. I just came back from Indonesia. Um, so that's some of the stuff that I do, right? So I am, as a personal chef, I think the most important thing is not only for me to cook for my client, but to teach them how to do it whenever I'm not available. And that is because sometimes I leave town and I'm not always available. And also because eventually I would like my clients to become independent in the field of feeding themselves without me being there. That is my ultimate goal as a personal chef. I don't always want to be with you. I want to make sure that you learn the reason why feeding yourself properly is good, feeding your children, and then eventually my ultimate goal is that you are able to do it independently on your home and that all it would take is a text message, a phone call, or like a virtual call. So eventually, you know, I don't, I don't, Expect a wish to be with my clients for years after years, unless you are taking me to travel. <laughs> <laughs> so if we're traveling, yes, I don't mind. But, um, you know, being as your personal chef, I will just teach you pretty much the basic, and then the expectation is that you learn how to do it on your own, right? So we have right now going on here, we are working into having meal for a family of four for five different days, not repeating the meal. Okay, um, the grocery were about 130 something dollars, yep. right? 137 so, Whole Foods. So 137 dollars in Whole Food, and that is everybody getting a meal every single day and not repeat it, right? Not eating leftovers, everybody eating, and we have veggies, starches, and protein in every single meal. Um, all flavors are different, so the flavors are not being repeated as well, which is a lot of times that's what um, some of our family members, spouses, friends, don't want to eat the same thing because they're like, oh, I tasted that yesterday. So that is, that is the key. That is an important part of meal prep, making sure that you are using different flavors, seasoning things differently, so it doesn't taste like they're eating the same thing more than once. Okay? So, and I will go, and, and, and I have different tips. So as we go, um, I have a few things that I want to show you. When you meal prep, it's very important that you have what you need to be successful, right? And I have some essentials. Some, some of us that are going fully eco-friendly would rather use the glass. Um, I re- highly recommend this one for my customer, they in Amazon, and when, you know, I, I give you the link or you guys could look it up. So this is, this is the right container for different reasons, right? So it's glass, it's easy to wash. You could put it in the dishwasher, so it's very um, friendly user. Not only that, the, the reason why I personally bought this one before I even recommend it to my client, I'm a bariatric patient. I actually had gastro bypass done and I had to eat in portion control in order for me to stay well every single day. When I had this bowl, I'm like, oh, it's perfect. I'm not depriving myself. I could kind of look feel. I'm very excited about what's on the container and it's safe. 
for me to heat it up. So it helped. Portion control, easy clean, and it's glass, right? So this is a great choice. Now, if you don't have time, not even to load the dishwasher, which it could be some of us, then we have this one here, right? These are also, they are pretty eco-friendly as well. I do believe in portion control. I think it's the key, right? So if you notice, the one that I use for my client, they're not too deep and they're not too big. Um, for the simple reason, the more food you have, the more you're gonna eat. That doesn't mean you need to eat all of that, that is in there. So if you do yourself a favor and you meal prep or you pack your lunches in containers that are smaller, you kind of convincing yourself that that's all you have to eat. And it's really gonna help you with portion control, weight management, and to be on track with the things that you want, okay? And, and like if you work out and things like that, you don't want to be super stuff or if you like myself, like I have 30 minute break. If I get a bigger container, I'm going to feel, feel like too heavy and stuff like that. So portion control really helps for many reasons. And don't think like, oh, I'm going to die at portion control. No, it's just, it's very nice for your digestion. It's very nice for why you keep going after that. And overall, it's just a good thing to do in life. So here we have two different containers. They both equally helpful for meal prepping. Um, they are eco this one is less eco-friendly. This one is more eco-friendly, but they both are very user-friendly and amazing. There's one magical item in the kitchen, and that is aluminum foil when you're meal prepping, right? <laughs> so aluminum foil is very important for those parents that want that have like picky year earlier we were talking about it. One, one potato, one, one um, green beans, or they want, or even us, we want a different flavors on the chicken. So this morning I was up early making the meals for us to share, and I use foil. I get a big tray, and you probably have seen this in TikTok, you probably have seen this in some kind of Instagram video going on. You guys, it really works, okay? You take your foil and you make packets, or you make tray. So you take one large tray, you take the foil. Like this, is, like this really works. And I actually, yeah. I'm going to use this tray as an example. Okay. Um, it's not metal. Of course, you know, you use the metal, the glass tray for home. But you pretty much say, okay, the foil. How, where are we going to put it in this section? So it's going to be an idea of something like this. Mm -hmm. So you take the foil and you say, okay, and if you see, I'm going to build like a bed. You know, I'm building like a little floating device bed for, for my, for my clothing and my bed and you want it to be a little bit, about an inch high. And it looks something like this. All right? So you go ahead and you say, oh, okay, so I need, I'm making two proteins, three. You go one, two, three. Okay? That's the first trick of quick meal prepping. So there you go, three different flavors. That's how I cook my fish. I have two different taste of fish going on here, and I cook them both for 15 minutes in one tray, okay? I made three different kind of chicken this morning, same way, one, two, three. So we have all three flavors, one tray. <laughs> so that is one trick, right? So the next... This is great, sorry. <laughs> no, so, and, and of course, another, another trick about foil that, um, and you guys, you all have seen this. You, we're all very capable and very smart. It's just like if you don't see it, you don't believe it. Yeah. Like, oh, okay, yeah. right? So the other one is, and foil is actually one of my best friends in the kitchen. I don't want to like waste it. So the next one is, you take the foil and you make a packet. Those of us that go camping a lot, mm -hmm. yeah. of you go camping. Used right? to, yeah. yeah. Used to, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm a big outdoor person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like books. That's actually what. That's actually one of the secrets about me. I'm, I'm an outdoor person. I love camping. I love going out there and do That's it fantastic. all. And do it the most. <laughs> and, we, and, and let me tell you, we eat gourmet when we're out there. I don't eat, yeah, we eat gourmet. We have a, a three course meal when we're out camping. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. And actually, when in my case the other day, I made, a, I made a wrap and I'm like, no, we need bacon, cheese, egg, you know, a whole. You made spin. a rabbit? Wrap. No, no, a wrap. 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 Wrap.
Garfield, Garfield just eats some raw. Yeah, same. The yeah. cat just eats some raw. No, it's spinach raw. Okay. It's spinach raw. <laughs> okay. But but when we outdoor, you know, we I, I make sure that I have everything I need, especially with my stomach. You know, I have to have the protein and I have to have everything that to keep me fulfilled. I don't want to eat something and then me looking for the cake for things that are not fulfilling me. Like if yeah. you take the time to take that meal and make sure that it's filling you up with everything that you need, you're gonna feel really good. And, and when I'm out there, I wanna be optimal, I wanna be active. We go out and uh, we go out fishing out in the water and I, there's no restaurant, there's no, there's no McDonald's 30 miles outside the water, near in the water. So we make sure that we are well fed. So the next trick about going on the camping site, right, is, oh, so you take the foil, my bad, I went ahead thinking you guys went camping with me. Okay, <laughs> so you take the foil, you fold it, depending how much you put it in. So they could be a smaller packet, but I, this is the size I, I have right now. So I fold the ends. So like triangles. we kind of make it, yeah, yeah. triangles. It's like we make it like an envelope type of thing. And I do that with all four corners. Then I take the flatter part and I'm going to twist it in. So we go in, and you gotta, you want to go in a few times. Like you go in, right? You see, you're making this like if it's an envelope, like you're just making sure the ends are tight. So we go in three times. So you start looking something like that, right? And then you go on the other side, and you go in, you go in, you go in one more time, three times. So there. So we back to like a square. So right now you have a purse, a pocket. Right? Mm -hmm. Inside the packet, you could put all your veggies, potatoes, mushroom. You put the fish and the protein and, and the starch already here. So, a piece of salmon or any fish that you prefer, two pieces of potato, three asparagus. You close it. Close it. You bake it. There's your meal right there. Yes? So, should I keep part out or in? They usually say that shiny part should go in so you it, it more more hit it hit up inside more. Okay. But really either or either or okay. we'll do the trick, yeah. But they you know they say the shiny when it's inside, it will kind of radiate more into it. Oh. Um but really uh, the shiny part is you just what you put in there. Well, <laughs> seal it, seal in the corner, you don't want the juices to come out. You know, so that's why I do the folding in the corners first to put everything in. But the same thing here, you, you go into this packet and like I have a home where some of us like potatoes, some of us like sweet potato. So I peel one and I peel the other one, right? Yeah. And then on the sweet potato, I, I chop it, I put it in the packet, I, a piece of butter, a little bit of the cinnamon and mm. whatever the person likes. I close it, there goes the sweet potato and on the other packet I put, you know, a little bit of rosemary, Italian seasoning, mm. butter, garlic, yeah. and that was the packet. We could eat very flavorful and very healthy. Wow. Simple yeah. at home. And you do that at home too? I do that at home all the time. Yeah. So when I meal prep on the weekends, the foil honestly is one of my favorite things to do, to use in the kitchen. Um, and inside the packet, you could actually also, you know, you could cook veggies, you could put, but you could also just put the protein if you don't want it, if you want them to stay more um, juicy. Put them in the pocket instead of leaving it in the foil open. Yes. So if you do that and say you put like chicken in there and some potatoes or veggies, um, can you freeze that? Yeah. yeah. And I recommend for freezing purposes to use glass. Oh, okay. Um, just because it's a higher protection. You could buy containers that say the freezing, um, yeah. what you call that, freezing. So you could put them in the freezer, right? But still, it's, it's thinner, and eventually the cold go through and it will make your food dry. It, it wonder, could happen. So if it's frozen and then you throw it out a little bit and toss it right on the... Um, you, and, and if you have something like this, right? So they have these ones too that have no division. If you were to make two packets and then you want to freeze it, then you put them in containers like this one. They have this uh, warmer Amazon Target, right? And pretty much you just stack up your packets there and freeze it. And then when you don't, when you want to reuse, then you just set them on your tray and make again for Wait, a couple of minutes. You can leave the food in the foil in the freezer. If you're gonna freeze it, I don't recommend when when I cook here, right? And I'm going to put it in straight in the refrigerator for consumption. It comes out of the foil, right? But if you're gonna, if you know you're going to reheat it up, you cook it, let it get to room temperature, freeze it, 
and then just use it for reheating purposes. Okay. Again. In yeah. the container. In the container. In the container. Container. Yeah. In the container. Yeah. yeah. But we're not going to keep it here for weeks and weeks. This right. is we are talking about consumption within the same week or so. If you're not, if you're not, then after you do the packet, then I recommend you put them in individual containers for mm -hmm. safety. But if you if you cook it now and you're like, oh, we're gonna eat it on Wednesday, and I don't want them to think that it's left over, <laughs> you just put it here, freeze it away, take it out, just like fresh. And but the packets are very easy to use. And and again, if you want to involve your children, make packets, show them how to do the packet. They could be doing the packets for you. Well, you're cutting the veggies. Like this, the kitchen should be a family reunion. Everybody that wants to eat should come and make <laughs> a meal prepping time. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, you do the party, you chop the veggies, you wash the dishes, you take the, and by the time I, by the time you're done, like the mom doesn't need to be the one tired. We should equally feel yeah. okay, and we'll be done on time, and then it's time to move on, watch TV, go outside, right. read the book, whatever it is. But the packets are very, very useful. The, using them as divisions is the, and the, the most important part is when you divide it, then you throw it away, your tray is clean. You don't have to wash the tray. I so if you see, the tray. I'm like this. No, no, no. No, the foil. And if you, that's why it's important to seal the corners yeah. for the packet. And when you're making the little bag, just make sure you're really folding it like they are building mm -hmm. a sealing process. And when you don't, you just, Throw that foil away and the tray put it back away. So we want it cooked where it's like easy and convenient and that's what for us to do. That makes sense. Somebody had a question? No? 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 Okay. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so that so foil. I, I just want you to know that foil is very, very cool to you. Now, because of the foil, in the divisions that I make, I'm able to multitask. So pretty much I Creating the same foil, I went ahead and I had some. So that was the choice. So we got fish and I make two divisions. This one is honey, um, garlic honey. So it's like an Asian infused taste. And then this one is more like a garlicky butter, parsley flavor going on, right? Flavors would not mix, the division was there. You could get 15 minutes, you got two, you got four servings of fish going on there. Actually eight, eight total. What did you cook it on? 450 minutes. Mm -hmm. okay. And in the packet. You just put all that in the packet. This one I did it in the open, in the oven. because it cooks so fast, so you could just leave it open. It's not going to get dry. So you're 15 minutes, you take you it out. You did the little tray. Yeah, the, the little, little tray. The little, yeah. the little bag yeah. for that. See, mm -hmm. I've never done that in the oven. I, I do it on my grill all the time yeah. to make yeah. fish and stuff, but I've never thought to do it in my oven. In the oven. And it's yeah. perfect. And it, and it yeah, so, so much could yeah. be done. So, and I actually, like, I cooked the veggie over the stove um, this morning. But really, this is also another thing that you could make on the packet. You just cut onions, peppers, you put it in a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper, whatever seasoning you like, close that packet, it'll be done by yourself. The oven do it. Yes, ma'am. Your protein, are you cooking it from fresh or frozen? Fresh. Fresh. If you were to do it from frozen, would you defrost it in the refrigerator first? Yeah. And then marinate it, or what would you do? I don't, I, I honestly don't, don't cook from frozen. Like, I... It just, it's not my preferred way of doing it. If you choose to do that, it, you know, it has to be thawed out, I would recommend and season. Um, I, I season even the water. I do, you know, even you know, if I'm boiling potato, I season the water. I think seasoning things will make you more happy to eat it. You're gonna to wanna to eat it again. You have to give flavor to what you're consuming color. Um, I was explaining to Angie, for me, color is very important. I think, you know, you, we are visual, a lot of us are visual learners, visual people. When you have color in your play, when you see a beautiful, when your children see a beautiful, it's very likely for them not to say, I don't want that, because it's colorful. Right. So whenever we see color, it really work out that people tend to want to eat it. You're going to want to eat it. Leftovers that are colorful, I'm more likely to eat it because I'm like, oh, it looks cute. Okay, this is, you know, it looks nice. <laughs> so I try to put a lot, infuse a lot of colors into my food and flavor. All the nice flavors all the time. Okay. So then we have, I made mashed potatoes for you. So those are my my starch will be. I got cheesy mashed potatoes, Ooh. and then I have white rice, which is very preferred with a lot of children. So um, <laughs> it's just something you know plain and easy. So we have white rice, and then I have yellow rice. Right? Now, so, we had a whole discussion about rice. Because <laughs> I like the jasmine tiger. So, 
So I was like, let's get the Japanese. Like, and she paused. I was like, okay, what's the pause? So we had a discussion on rice. I've been doing rice wrong to you. <laughs> she called me to tell me. I did. I called her. Oh my God, I've been doing rice wrong. So apparently, <laughs> <laughs> rice has its own flavor. And depending on what you put it in, it's going to take oh, a little bit of flavor oh, and mess with your seasoning. So in order to do this rice, she got. I got plain white rice. I got plain white rice. So when she did her meal prep, we can actually show you, we'll put that on the blog. She did five different days and she brought, it was $137 of whole foods, which is impossible That's to do. That's really she did. amazing. Including the seasoning, the rice, the vegetables, fresh, non-farm raised salmon and chicken for $137. Mm -hmm. My favorite secret now. The secret is to go shopping with a list. Go with a plan. Don't go to the supermarket clueless of what are you buying because that's when you really affect yes. your pocket, okay? And that's when you waste. I will so, say, yeah, that's when I spend two hundred dollars and have to order yeah. dinner and because I didn't have a plan. Yeah. yeah. So, so pretty much, you know, <laughs> when when we had the conversation, I said, you know, for how many people, what you guys prefer, and when she told me, I'm like, okay, you know, I brainstorm. I say, okay, and I and I and I really I portion I said okay you know we're gonna we're gonna need four pieces or five pieces of chicken five 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 four four that's what we're buying right we're not wasting we buying that that's what we're eating that's what it is now I knew I was going to use rice so I'm like okay so I need to use rice more than once we're not storing rice with one box so okay so we're gonna do white we're gonna do yellow then this I knew I was the same rice we bought same rice we still have half a bag in there yeah. <laughs> and then I still get a half potato. So we got mashed potatoes here. That is a children prefer. These are two children prefer items and here. And these are the organic red potatoes. And it was one, one bag. bag. It was like one, a bag. Pound bag right? one bag. And then we went here. And then whatever we had left over on potatoes, yeah, then yeah, we put the them beans. in the green bean. We don't waste anything, right? So we went here and we put them on the green bean. And then the green bean. And everything here is big and friendly, except this one because it had butter. But you know, like if they eat butter, they put a little bit of cheese. But those two items could be either vegan butter or it could be no cheese, and, and it will be fine. But here we have, there's no meat products, and even on the green beans, we have garlic, oil, um, salt, pepper, a little bit Italian seasoning. I took five of the little potatoes from here, I put them in here, right? So we have potato in both sides. So you don't waste anything, okay? So we, that's, that's the goal. We don't waste, and I, when we went with a list, exactly what we needed is what we used. So then that's the same thing with the peppers. We had the peppers, and I knew I wanted to have Mexican meal, and I wanted to have, I have a Caribbean flavor meal going on, and I'm like, okay, we could tap that chicken with some onions and peppers, right? So, yeah, so that's how, that's where we go. And then in the Mexican meal, it's like, okay, so we could have fajitas, we could have tacos, we could have quesadillas, mm -hmm. okay? So you could have three different meals for three picky eaters from one, from one plate, right? So, and, and I will go into that one really quick. So, it, with the Mexican meal, this is how we go. We had the tortillas, and you could, and you could pick any other tortilla that the family likes. It could be corn as well. You get tortillas, we got the Mexican blend cheese, and then we have our veggies here, and then we have our chicken. And I chop it up already for us to, for consumption. Even but, though I was physically at the store and saw what she, it's still amazing to me, 100, $37. I took a picture of the receipt at Whole Foods, and we use no coupons. Y'all don't like to use coupons again. But it, it's still like, I was there, and I still don't believe it. I was there. <laughs> but, we, but we went there with a plan. That's it. The, the whole thing is being having a plan, right? <laughs> <laughs> she had <a> plan. <laughs> having, having the plan. And, and you know, we got to stick a butter. And then actually, I was thinking, why have one leftover butter? I know now. It's because we were so, if we were to do quesadilla, then we have butter to oh, put right. in the pan. But you saw the leftover butter? Well, one whole stick of butter. <laughs> so. <laughs> Wait, you only bought two? Two. I still got one. <laughs> I still got one. And this morning, I, I, I'm like, okay, why do I have one butter? Why, why was this butter about? <laughs> uh, got it. In quesadilla. But that's what my kid would want. Yeah. Because that, <laughs> so that's what happened. When you, when you have a family that is diverse, so we have the tortillas. We had the meat. So you had the child that said, oh, I don't want the veggies. Okay. <laughs> so you take the tortilla, right? And then I, I keep them warm here. Yeah. And I have to tell you this. I have my friend back there. There's Elizabeth. Elizabeth is actually a very, very good best friend <laughs> from Mexico. No. But I always tell her, you know, I, I think of my other life, I, I was born Mexican. 
because it is my ultimate favorite cuisine, and I oh, yeah. and I like all yeah. cuisine. I I actually consider myself to be an international chef because I love cooking from every cuisine. I love Indian food. I love Greek food. I love my own um, cultural Spanish food. But when it comes to the Mexican meals, they, oh, they yes. win my heart. And not because you see, I, I just really think that I was Mexican or that I will be Mexican in my other life. I understand this because I was Asian in my other life. I know I'm not, right? But I, y'all, in my last episode, this is right, I'm married. I am Asian about Filipino food, Indian food, Korean food, Japanese food, Chinese food, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We're I equal was opportunity Asian. food. Yeah. But we are married. equal. But there's something there. So I feel that way about the, the yes. Mexican yes. cuisine. Yes. And I'm like, I can really, you know, oh, I can yeah. really do this. Yes. Yeah, I can yes. really infuse the Mexican cuisine in my life. So I have the tortillas and they all warm up. You take one. And I'm going to show you, my hands clean, so you take with the one, and you tell me, oh, I want a taco. Oh, actually, we're going to do the picky eater first, we, the picky child. So we wanna, go... Do you want to play? Yeah, we could take a play right here. We, I take a play. Oh, sure. yeah, well, we, have, we have this big... Ah, yeah, you that's done. Play? You got it. Perfect. Okay. So we go right here. We put a little bit of cheese in the one side. Now, if you had the real picky one that don't want the meat... You just flip this in half, make a half moon, and grill it. And you're done. You have a cheese quesadilla. But if you have one that is willing to have protein, then you just go ahead. And this, this one here, this um, chicken, had the uh, Mexican seasoning on it, the different peppers. So you and just... She, sorry, quick. Okay. So she didn't buy, like, the name brand things. She used the store brand. So 365, 365. is the store brand mm -hmm. of, of yeah. And one of the things she was talking about is you can make your own seasonings and all that. Y'all, she bought a pack of seasonings. Mm -hmm. Make our rice a little easier. And that's how she made that. Because you could do some semi homemade stuff. You could definitely use your own seasoning. You could, you know, you get some cumin, chili powder, onion powder, garlic powder, and you make, you know, a little bit of salt pepper. You could make your own seasoning. But us that are rushing, just pick a good quality um, seasoning, Italian seasoning, and then you could put it all together. But we, 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 we the chicken, so the chicken, you, you washed it, you chopped it up, you put the seasoning in it. Did you put it in those little pockets? Yeah, we did a tray. You did a tray? We cooked three different chickens in 25 minutes. For, for, yeah, so we, have, we cooked 15 pieces of chicken in okay. 25 minutes. <laughs> so we had three divisions, one, two, and actually they look real cute. Yeah. They were like marching, like one, two, three. <laughs> when I look at this, we like, this is so cute, you know, it fit perfectly, five, five. There was 15 on the package, yeah. so I made them all, so it's like, five, five, five. And I, I'm a little bit symmetrical, so I was really enjoying all these five chickens <laughs> right now. But that's a different, that's a different show. Well, um, when, that, when, that, when that heated chicken, though, did you cook the breast whole and then chop it? Yeah, the yeah I just chop it here. First. No, no, I chop it here when I got here this morning. Like, oh, you take the breast and then chop it out. And just cut it, yeah. And, and the thing is, like, and another thing that I want to tell you, this is just something as a, as a personal choice, but sometimes our children or, or, or people that we cook for, um, they may, if they are, have a sense of smell that they're a little bit delicate, yeah. that could trigger them also to not eat the meals. And I recommend, wash your meats, guys. Like, really wash it. Don't, don't get it from the packet and toss mm -hmm. it in, 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 in the bowl or in the stove. Mm -hmm. Wash it. So all my protein that I use like for the chicken i make a big bowl of home and i kind of bake the chicken with um vinegar right so i use the apple cider vinegar and i so i first i rinse it on top of it but then i put them there and i wash them and then I, I i rub them and i massage them and it's like and i let it sit there for a little bit the water gets tossed away and they get rinsed again and it doesn't smell you don't want people avoiding eating any meal because of of the, of the smell, like it smells chicken, it smells. So you wanted to have meat that are clean. The same thing with the pork, that's another, that's another meat that have a very strong smell. Yeah. And our children will refuse to eat it if they could smell kind of like the animal on the meat, okay? Yeah. So it's just a recommendation when those of you that are struggling with your children at home, you wanna make sure you, you clean, that your protein My is washed. My problem is not the meat, it's the cheese. She will not eat cheese, nice. so I'll make lasagna. How am I gonna feed her when the whole family eats cheese but her? I'll make tacos and stuff. I'm like trying to make um, quesadillas. You can't make a quesadilla without cheese. You pick it up and all the meat falls out. <laughs> so she will not eat cheese because of the smell when she was three years old. She smelled it. I, I ran across the video the other day mm. and was like, this is when she stopped. Cause she said, 
on the video, I don't like the smell of cheese. It makes me not want to eat it. And she mm -hmm. was three. Well, my daughter has not. The only time she will possibly eat cheese is on a cheese pizza, but it has to be a specific one with very little cheese on it. So I recommend, for example, to, when you make and everybody is eating quesadilla, you see her there or, or make her a burrito. Yeah. And, and all you do is that you, you put the, the fillings and then fold it differently, make like a whole roll and put a little bit of butter and close it. Mm -hmm. Cook it close so nothing not in skin. Okay. So you, she needs to eat what you're eating, like you're not making another meal. So just omit the cheese, close it differently, you know, fold the tortilla in and then wrap, wrap, wrap. And then that part that is open, you put butter, that's the first part that go down to seal the tortilla from staying together. So she could still eat anything that you guys are eating you know, when it comes to handling the tortilla. And then for the lasagna, I recommend you buy her a small tray, um, a little glass tray. I have, I have a medium one here. here. But like maybe almost this size if it didn't have the yeah. divider. And, divider and, and, and if you want to toss it away because you don't want to wash dishes, like the Dollar Tree one might have yeah. like the, the pancake ones, right? Mm -hmm. And see her there and show her, okay, put them in. Make, have her make roll. Like two lasagna rolls, oh, and it doesn't okay. have to have cheese. Have her put the meat or whatever filling it is, uh, omitting the and cheese, and have them roll her two pieces or her three rolls, a little bit sauce, and bake it separate. Don't stop eating what you like because you picky eater don't want it. Just have them see, well, let's prep, you're different, but you help me because that's your choice about not eating that. Yeah. Okay? So <laughs> both meals could be eaten, just make a different portion and have them, have them and you do that also when you have a spouse that don't want to consume something you're consuming. Mm -hmm. Don't stop eating what you like because they don't want to eat it. You know, either have them come and help you and put it differently or just find it, you know, different ways to still consume it because not everybody had to stop eating lasagna. It's delicious. Yeah. You have a question? No, I was saying modification. I, I think yeah. the first one thing yeah. about making burritos into a quesadilla. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the, the same ingredient. I used to work out at a different facility, and I, because the RA, we had to do like modifications for the workout because I couldn't do all of them. So we need to start, instead of saying, I'm going to make different meals, we're going to make modifications to the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so this is our house. Now my house. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Definitely. 100%. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah. 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 We just get it make our life easier in order to enjoy it. So I, that's, that's the rule of thumb that I go by. And I do that with some of my clients as well. I tell them, no, we can still have that. They just, we're just going to put theirs in the side yeah. and then this is how we do it. So then we have the, the cheese, the, um, then for the quesadilla, we, put, we will put more cheese on it, right? And then all you have to do is butter on the pan. So we would, actually, we could even get one going so you see how easy it is we just turn this on here it's not my stove but i'm going to see oh i think he had turned everything uh -huh. on right correct yep, yep. oh we went to this to this yep. angle here okay, okay. let me do this you one. Yeah, okay. i'm going to do this one in the front just because we're just making one uh, oh there you go there we go you have ever used this yet? <laughs> no, actually, it's a non-stick pan, so um, it should be able to. So non-stick pans, I don't have to use any oil. You shouldn't. Uh, you shouldn't need to. If the if the, so if the teflon is free, if it's a true non-stick, non you should okay. be able to put it there. And what do you use to clean a non-stick pan? So I soak it. I, I soak it. I let it. So it's easy to remove whatever is on it. Perfect. So I I usually soak almost all my dishes. I actually I'm I'm an old school. I do wash my dishes by hand. I really do. Um, <laughs> I know. No. There's certain things. It's actually, it's actually therapeutic for me to yes. do things with water. It no, is. No, I really enjoy it. I, I like to do all my pots yeah. and pans, yeah. even though they can, they're stainless steel. Yeah, no. I still, because then I can get more of my dishwasher yeah. than it. But too, there's something about scrubbing really, really, really I like hard. it. I like it. I actually, I actually, let me tell you, I don't know how to use a dishwasher <laughs> when I travel and they're expecting me to use the dishwasher. It's like, are you serious? Yeah. How you we are going to do this? Yes. I can be your assistant. Yeah. So I'm going to go to Indonesia. You're going to Africa now. I'm going to Africa. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to Texas. A client is taking me to Texas in June and then I'm going to Africa next. And she just came back from Indonesia. And I just came back from Indonesia. <laughs> so so here we go so this is all you need for the quesadilla now if, if it's for you and, and you're not omitting veggies and i don't think we're going to omit veggies we're going to just put some of it here, right in here right and we have onions and peppers here and of course we use color 
So we grill the onions and we have the peppers going on. And I seasoned this. I have salt pepper. I have some of the, um, a little bit of paprika and the, some mm -hmm. of the type of seasoning. We put it right in there, just a little bit of oil. And there we go. So we have this going on here. I'm hungry. And it's right in the pan. <laughs> <laughs> See, and I make have, sure you, have, yeah. everybody would like to try some of this this time. Okay, yeah. so let's make a few. <laughs> well, we're gonna make a few of them. She's gonna make a couple. Okay. Yeah. I have a question. Go your for rice. It. When you make your rice, um, because I had started using a rice cooker because my neighbor was like, "Oh, just get a rice cooker." I'm like, yeah. "Rice cooker? Okay, got a rice cooker." Did that. Well, my rice cooker broke. So then I started making it myself, and it's been terrible ever since. Do you rinse your rice yes. first? Do you soak it? Do you, what do you, how do you make your rice? Because all I know is I wash it off a little bit, put it in the water for 20 minutes, and then I, it's terrible. And the first looks good. Yeah, mine is terrible since my rice cooker broke. So my rice is, you know, it's a Spanish way, mainly the rice. And what we do is we cook well. I'm not going to say the Spanish way, the Puerto Rican way, because that's not even Spanish. Some of these people do it differently. But the Puerto Rican way that I learned is that we put water, that for the white rice, we put water to boil uh, midway. Then we rinse the rice. When it's boiling, then you rinse the rice. Add the rice to the pan. Now, you should be able to kind of see the rice, right? So the water, I don't have a natural ratio because I, I just see it. I know I have to be able to kind of see the rice, but the water should be about this high. From it. I add a little bit of oil and then I see some that um, I will see some that water right there with some salt. Depending depending who I'm cooking for, I could even put like a chicken bouillon in there a little bit so it has some more flavor to it. But pretty much that's what we do. We keep it a medium high. Once it all dry, you don't touch it until it all dry, then you drop it to in numbers, it will be it will be boiling at a seven, and then you drop it to like a five. Once it's all dry and you stir, then you drop it to a three, and you cover for twenty minutes. That's it. That's what rice box. We're gonna have to write that down. <laughs> <laughs> See, my mom is Puerto Rican, or I'm Puerto Rican, and my her trick was the measurement was always put the spoon in, and if it stays standing up, the cycling. and then slowly, it's the perfect amount of water and rice. Yes. If it falls too quickly, too much water, too much water. Add more rice. If it stands for too yeah. long, too much rice, add water. See, I and I have, yeah, yeah. And so, I have Asian friends who do the finger, which finger. I still, I forget what it is, but you put your finger in and, oh, yeah. yeah, and that's how they do it. And then I'm like, oh no, I just do one to one. I throw it into my rice cooker and it's perfect. Ours is just mushy. <laughs> well, you know, they, so, yeah. so for those of if you were to cook like quinoa, quinoa has to be two to one, right? Yeah. And jasmine rice and bas, 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 is the yeah. same way. You have to put two cup of water for every cup of rice. That's how quinoa, that's how you treat quinoa. Um, quinoa and that's, yeah. Yeah. So, but, but in the Spanish, it's just very, it's very accurate, but I know my spoon won't fall if I could kind of see the rice, but still have some water yeah. going on there. So then you put oil in there while you're cooking? Yes. Yes. I like yeah. this whole bouillon yeah. thing. Yeah. It's just flavor. Well, it's yeah, that's the, how I learned to make rice with yeah. Cuba bouillon, yeah. chicken, yeah. Yeah, you want to flavor your yeah. stuff. I, I actually, I didn't know if we were going to have vegan um, audience, so I would be respectful and not add any, anything to it. But if I were to make it at home for my family, I put some uh, chicken bouillon, or you could put like the, the vegetable kind of broth yeah. on it, because you want flavor. Yeah. The more flavor you add to it, the more your family will be like excited to it. Do you want to something new or something? Oh, this is crazy. Well, I've been known to do it like even if I've, I, and during the holidays when I'm going through a lot of chicken broth, instead of making myself, I'll just buy the big case of it. And if I have extras, I will actually boil my chicken in chicken broth. Or oh, make my rice in chicken. Make it the rice, It is yes. so good. Yeah. And then for my yellow rice, what I do, so um, we make a sauce. Do you want to try it? Yeah. Oh, man. Okay. So, yes, you need it to be low. I went the wrong way. <laughs> Do you want us to plate the rice and start serving that? We could actually, if you want to cut this and okay. give them some of this okay. to go out, and then, um, um, and then I could actually, I have spoons, or I have spoon for the rice. She's for, for the yellow rice, what we do is we make the sauce. So we put a little bit, we start with oil, and then we put a little bit of um, tomato, <laughs> tomato sauce, and whatever Maybe you plums. add into it. If you add in beans, then you add the beans then. If you add in, like I did this morning, it was again a veggie rice, so I added tomatoes to it, tomatoes, peppers to it. 
Um, and once you create your sauce, you wash your rice, you add that to it. You mix that together first, and then I add, we have sazon, for people that are not familiar with sazon, and you add paprika, you want to add some color to it. You add, you could add some chicken bouillon to it, something with flavor, and then add the water. And you, once again, you want to see the rice, but you also want to make sure that you have some, some water in it. Yeah. And I let it, and, and again, let it get dry a little bit. Yes. Let it, I was going to cut the water. Okay. We let it drain the water. Oh, that makes more sense. Cold, but you know what I mean? So you, so because most of the bags are on the instructions say to boil it, boil the water, put the rice in, and then let it sit up for 20 minutes. But you're saying put it in there on high, uh, let the water cook out, and then let it Mix it, it and then cover. Yes. Yes. Because if you let it, it's like you don't want it to be soupy. That's how it gets sticky because you're overcooking it with the water so high. You just want it high to dry so it absorbs. Then you mix and you cover and let it finish cooking by itself. And then I have some mushrooms going on too. So I have the, the mushroom going on there. So those were, those were my size. The mushroom, the green beans, the peppers. And then my starches were the potato, the white rice, and the yellow rice. Way to package this for lunch, let's say the next morning. So, to package it, I will always like, for, for instance, for this container here, if I have this container, I will pretty much just set my rice at the base and then I will put my meat right in the middle and then the veggies kind of on the side. That's how I will treat this container. This one that is separate, I will put my rice on one side, the meat, but I usually will put my rice and my veggies together and then kind of pour over my meat. Anything saucy, you want it on the other compartment. You don't want it, you don't want to throw too much wet stuff on the rice because then it will kind of open up and it'd be kind of gross when you try to eat it for lunch. But I think, I think using the containers is, is good portion control overall, but also it's easy to store it. One of the meals, actually even two, the ones with fish, they kind of restaurant style because you're going to have the fish, the mashed potatoes, the green beans, so you could eat very good while you're still cooking at home. So I'm gonna make some mashed potatoes and fish. Ooh, yeah. Who will go for that? Let's see. Now we could put a little bit of this. This actually, this is mojo chicken. So this will bring this, this, oh, this pair up with the rice. Okay, let's call mole chicken. Oh. Oh. So that one's for now. So if you actually um, just toss it up a little bit. So she's passing out fish, the salmon, and we have an Asian infused one, and then we have a garlic butter fish going out. And the green peas are very easy to make, pretty much. You put your pan, a little bit of oil, garlic on it, fresh garlic on the pan. You clean your green beans, cut the ends. However, if you buy the store, but it sells them shrink for you as well, if you don't have that much time to do that. But still rinse them. I still rinse them, cut them in there, cut them a little bit, and then put a little bit of water. Salt, pepper on it, close them for a little bit. You want the steam to make them kind of tender, then remove the foil or the lid, close them a little bit more, turn up, you do that stove top or in the actual stove with your... Uh... Stove top, stove top. Now if you are in a rush or you want everything in the oven, you could then close them, you take a big bowl, and then in there you put your green beans, kind of pat dry them because the broccoli, the green beans, the cauliflower, any of those veggies when you wash them, if you don't squeeze the water out, when you put them in the oven, they will kind of, it's like if they're boiling instead of roasting. And then in, in that instant, then they become smushy. So that's something to keep in mind. When you, whenever you're baking, you want to put them in the oven when they dry. Okay, so pretty much wash, wash your broccoli, wash your cauliflower, um, the potatoes, the, the asparagus, the green beans. But make sure you are checking the water. I will actually also put them on a, yeah, I just have to my cutting board yeah. <laughs> and I kind of pat dry them. Because also, it will absorb the flavor and the seasoning that you add into it. If it's wet, everything will be like slipping out of it. And it becomes like a, like a boiling process instead of a baking process. 
So make sure you dry your veggies before you put them in the oven. That way you get the seasoning and then toss them. Right in there, you put the green beans, oil, salt, pepper, garlic, toss, toss, toss. Put them in the tray with open, open foil and just have them medium, in medium level in there. And then you just shake them a little bit, 10 minutes, another 10 minutes, you have green beans. So the, the oven could be your best friend once you get to kind of maneuver your way into the oven. You could get a lot of things done. The, and the same process with the pepper. Cut them, and I, I will always cut the onions and the peppers when they go in the oven in bigger chunks, just because you don't want it to get too soggy. You want it to stay firm when you use them for meal prep. And I will just cook them, uh, cook them for about 10 minutes, kind of cook them a little bit, 10 minutes out. So keep them in bigger chunks. Bigger chunks. Meal prepping so that they don't get soggy. They don't get soggy, exactly. Okay? So, so you get a mashed potatoes, and there's barbecue chicken, and there's some mushrooms going on. So if you notice, everything that we have going on, you could definitely eat it in many different ways, okay? So we had the white rice going out with the barbecue chicken, but then I added mushroom to it. You could add the green beans to it. If you try other one or, or you don't want the white rice, then you put the yellow rice with the barbecue chicken. So you want to create things that you could kind of mix and match and that is never looking the same and they don't get bored that way. Do we have any questions? It's good, okay. So the yellow rice, you will put some oil. That's how you start. Half, half pan. Now we use what is called caldero. She probably know what a caldero is. It's a very thick material, but you could use a non, non-stick pan, like teflon pan. You don't want it to, because usually this kind of rice will, will stick to the bottom, right? So you put oil, <laughs> sauce, like tomato sauce, tomato paste, if you don't have tomato sauce. Then to that, we, it's what we call sofrito. Well, sofrito is a blend of onions, peppers, garlic, and cilantro, okay? You could buy sofrito already made, but you could also make it, and you could use it in many different ways. Again, to make sofrito, onions, garlic, so you will put one onion, one pepper, about six garlic cloves, and a handful of cilantro. It all goes in the blender, a little bit of water. Some old fashioned you used to use oil. You don't want to use oil, it gets things fermented. So you just want to keep it as, as clean as possible, and that will be with some water. And I will set the onions last, but first touching the blender. You know, if you're using like the cup, mm -hmm. right? Follow me? So I will put the leaf on the top. So cilantro first, peppers, garlic, onion last. The onion have water and it will help the blending process. If you're using the blender the other way, then onion going first. So whatever is the, throw the more water, then you put that one closer to the blade. But all you do is that you blend that up, and the sofrito could go a long way. You could marinate meat, but you could also use it. That is, that is one of the secret ingredients to Spanish rice. So it's oil, sofrito, tomato sauce or tomato paste, and then you add whatever you want to accompany that. Gandules, which is the pigeon piece for us. Um, it could be any kind of bean, black bean, red bean, garbanzo bean, any beans you could add to it. In this case, all I did, I added a can of the diced tomatoes. You know, the petite diced tomato from the supermarket that we have it? So that's what I did, I added a, a can of organic diced tomatoes in there, and I chopped a little bit of cilantro to that sauce. I let that sauce kind of cook for a little bit, like they hug and kiss together for a little bit, right, for flavor, and then I wash my rice, I add it to it, I mix it, and then I add more water, and a little bit of salt. Yeah, but that should give you great rice right there. And then you let it dry, and then you mix it one time, and then cover it. For the people that are sensible to like tomato and acidity, do you have something else that we can use instead? So, so pretty much, just you could make that. You could make yellow rice. You won't use the tomato, so then you could use like paprika, or you could use something that is that would um, turmeric. Like you could make delicious turmeric rice, and that would be. And that one is anti-inflammatory, so it's really good for us, ladies, especially when we are in our days. Mm -hmm. And it's a Mediterranean type of rice. Mm -hmm. So easy. And in that case, all you do is you put a little bit of oil, a little bit of onions going on, cilantro, if we're completely omitting the tomato, some little peppers to make the sauce. You put about it take a whole tablespoon of turmeric and then you put some of the cumin, C-U-M-I-N, cumin, right? And that's actually, it's very popular in the Cuban cuisine, but it's also very popular on the Mediterranean cuisine. So you add a little bit of cumin, you let that simmer low heat, 
because you don't have the saucy of the tomato paste, right? So you don't want it to um, overheat it because then it gets dry. You want it to still stay a little bit kind of wet. Once you let that simmer for a little bit, once your rice add it, I would use jasmine rice for that one. Jasmine rice is an aromatic rice. It already smells good. And when you add it, when you make it in the turmeric rice, it's very delicious. So um, my preference when I'm making anti-inflammatory rice would be to use the jasmine rice. But again, if you just have long grain, you just add that to it and just kind of mix it in, add a little bit more water until you have the perfect consistency of mixing, but the spoon not falling down, that is just right. Let it simmer on medium high. Once it dry, mix it, close, 20 minutes, you get rice. Yeah, but turmeric is a great alternative for color and it's healthy, it's a healthy choice. So all my chickens were made on the little trays, on the little beds. But I made the seasoning. Oh, the seasoning. So the barbecue, uh, barbecue, the, the first one, the Mexican, yeah, the, second one. the second one. So the Asian one, uh, the honey, like, well, let me see. Um, I got to backtrack my chicken. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I got barbecue. I forgot, I got barbecue. Oh, mojo. 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 This one here. Okay. So the mojo. There's two ways you can make mojo. There's a, there's a nice shortcut. Um, and is that Publix, Goya, <laughs> everybody have the mojo seasoning made, right? But it's not good enough. You could take that, right, as a shortcut, but at home what I do is like I take that, I put it in the blender, I add to it more garlic, cilantro to it, right? I blend it up, I pour over my chicken for marinade, but I also add a little bit like onion powder, garlic powder to it, Flavor, but that is, that's the short that's the short way to do it for us busy mom. If you have plenty of time, Pinterest have great um, mojo seasoning. It's M O J O, but pretty much that is orange juice. Actually, that's what I added to. I added some orange juice and, and my own lemon juice to it. Mm -hmm. But orange juice, lemon juice, and then again cumin, oregano, onion powder, garlic powder. So it's all those tropical, you know, Caribbean infused flavors all together. Plus the citrusy. It's citrus mainly what goes in there. It's a citrus flavor. Yeah. See, I've made that with one. That and then with the pork, but never done with the chicken. Chicken is great. Yeah. It goes very well with chicken. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So just know when you meal prep, it's, it's really it, it's very easy once you go to the store with a plan. So the key is make your list, go intentionally with the intention to the supermarket, just getting exactly what you need. Bring it home, portion control it, divide it as you need it. Then, you know, cook it the easy way. I showed you a very short way, an easy way to cook it. Another, another thing that you may want to invest is in buying like the medium sized crock pot. So that's another one. And I have used that and I have taken some of my clients to use it too. If you have three medium crock pots going on, you could do the same thing that the oven does or the same thing the stove would do, but the crock pot do it by myself. Okay, and all, all you have to do is like you, you, you clean your chicken, you season it, like for the mojo, you're gonna have the, the citrus, the orange juice, the lemon juice, or if you buy the mojo already prepared. But I, 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 I always dress it up a little bit because it's just plain by itself, it, it needs a little bit more. But you can always, if you're using that, spice it up a little bit. If you're making it at home, just make sure you have your orange juice, your lemon juice, and all your seasoning. And put some um, extra cilantro there. For the crock pot, you could even have potatoes and carrots on it. Close it, let it do its job by itself. Barbecue, clean your chicken, season it, salt, pepper, a little bit onion, garlic powder, put your favorite barbecue sauce on it. Just, and that one I will cook, because the barbecue is more thick, I will cook it on low. Let it slowly go. The mojo could go on high, and it will be done quickly. And then the other one, the Mexican one, the same thing. You clean, you clean it, season it, for the Mexican one, you could add like half a can of the tomatoes. You could also add in here, you know the enchilada sauce? Mm -hmm. Have you seen it, right? Enchilada sauce? Okay, enchilada sauce is a great liquid to add to the crock pot that will keep you with the Mexican flavors and it will not dry off your meat. You don't want to add water because then it will be, it, it will be flavorless, you know, it will be as on the point that you need. But to the Mexican meals, you could put the enchilada sauce, the green or the red one, a little bit, a little bit of the tomato can, that from the diced one that comes already with flavor as well. 
or the fire. You know, sometimes some people make the dip with the fiery, fiery roasted tomatoes. Half of the can in the crack pan, and that infused uh, onions and pepper, big chunks, and you could have chicken made that way. So you could have three crack pot going on, you could have three dividers in the oven going on, but meal prep could be pretty easy. Plan ahead. I recommend you plan ahead, go to the store with the right intentions, put in your buggy just what you need, and make the children's and the and your spouses part of the shopping experience that way everybody owns it. Yeah. What other questions so, do you have for shopping? Any questions? Yes, ma'am. So how long did you have to put a time table down if you start to finish shopping? We're going to do it on a Sunday. How long did I will, I will give yourself for the for the cooking for this many items. I would say two hours. Two hours. Wow. Okay. <laughs> because this is what happened. This is how I start. So I'm gonna tell you like this morning. First thing, clean meat. That's number one. Clean season meat. Wash your chicken. Make sure that you have them. Get your dividers ready. I actually seasoned right on the dividers. This stuff wasn't seasoned three days ago. This was seasoned this morning. But making sure that it's washed, that there's no chicken smell to it, will absorb the seasoning, your own seasoning that you add into it. The next thing, the garlic. That garlic needs to be mashed. You have a small blender, right? Or invest in a little ninja blender. You could get the garlic already peeled. Dump that garlic there. I recommend that even when you go shopping. Get a whole pack of clean garlic already. Add it there, and then you could put a little bit of water, a little bit of um, oil to it. Blend it, keep that paste there. Garlic goes with everything. Even when you're making garlic toast, when you, if you want to have a good sandwich, and I'm going to go there next. We're going to go to breakfast for a minute, in a minute. But I recommend, that's what I did. I washed my meat, get my beds ready, put them there, made them lying there. They look like they were going to school, everybody. And then I go, I season, basic, salt, pepper, oil, um, garlic, onion powder, and then I put the particular seasoning that everybody was taking. Done. Let it sit there, refrigerate it, let it sit there. That's one thing. Then I went into my fish, wash my fish, cut it up, the portions that I needed. Again, two beds, oil, set them where I need it, sit, put it to the side. And then I went into my starships. So I had three pans going on at the same time. I have water, I have a little bit of oil. I took care of my two rices first. Mm -hmm. So once I have my water boiling here, and then I have my saucy going here, I wash the rice, put the rice here, Put the rice here, this one, salt, taste it, cover it. And then go here. The salsa with the yellow one, take a little bit more. So then add my rice, my clean rice there. Let it do the job. Once they're both dry and I mix them up, I cover. Make sure you regulate the temperature. I'm not going to put my chicken in because this, this rice needs to have my eyes on. But once I know they're dry and that they're going to do the job by itself, that I lower it to three and it's covered, then I turn around. I load the oven. And then I knew my fish only needed 15 minutes, so the fish go up in 15 minutes, and then my chicken that was, I put the fish under, closer to my burner, because the 15 minutes you out, and then I put my chicken on the top shelf. What was the temperature that you put all that on? I did 400, 400. Then I put my first time at 15 minutes, then I know I need, my chicken needed 10 more minutes, reset it for 10 minutes, lower the chicken for it, and just, so that's doing the job. So while that's going, this is going, the potatoes are boiling. I leave my rice alone, then I handle my potatoes. They're boiling, get them out, smash them, get them out of the way, done. Potatoes are done. Rices are done by themselves in 20 minutes. By the time that the, this beef here came for the chicken, both rices are done, chicken is done. And then we handle veggies. So we should be chopping the peppers and the onions. I actually even took the time, I, I cut my mushrooms, that you saw the little cube. You don't have to get that fancy. You could cut them in half or you could leave them whole. Or you could buy them already pre-sliced. And I explained to her, the reason why I have them whole, usually pre-sliced go back quickly. So you want to make sure that if you're not going to consume it, buy, it, buy them um, whole. And then if you even have the time, you could rinse them and kind of dry them so they don't, they don't go back. But that, 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 that is it. And, and, and all your food is done. It's just a matter of thinking what order but have, have a system. I needed to get out of there in two hours, I needed to get dressed, I needed to travel, and it was done. Yes, ma'am. So if I'm cooking on Sunday for the entire week, do I leave that on the fridge or the freezer? I will leave on the fridge Monday and Tuesday, and I will freeze the rest of the, of the meals. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are they freezable? 
And it, oh yeah, yeah, the freezer bowl. Mashed potato and freezer bowl. You just have to make sure that things that are you freezing, you the freezer, you know, cold is very strong. So you've got to make sure that you storage it in a very tight container. And I would prefer glass, just because it, it, it takes a lot to penetrate the glass, you know, and, and it keep them it keep them in good condition. And to to once you freeze them, I will throw it out. Like if I know I want to consume them for dinner today, I will move them from the freezer inside the stove. I'm sorry. <laughs> from the freezer into the bottom of the regular refrigerator. And then when I come home, I will warm them up. And you can warm them up with a little bit, like put a little bit of milk on the on the on a little pan and put them back in there. You know, treat them gently, a little bit of butter, a little bit of milk, and you will have delicious mashed potatoes again. Yeah. And, and if you have, if you're in a rush for microwave, then I would do it in little increments. Like like 30 seconds, mix a little bit, 30 seconds, mix a little bit. And I know sometimes when a rush, I'll be like, okay, three minutes. Yeah. No, because the edges will get ruined, you know, the edges of your, of your rice or your things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, any other questions? Yes. So, for a family of six. Yes. You know, like, would you... Do all the individual things or just do like one big mashed potato and things like that? So I think for a family of six, if we on the same consensus, you may just be able to do instead of three divisions, like two, you know, you will have to make your pockets a little bit larger. But I, I you know, I actually, you know, when I, when I was just doing meal prep by itself, I actually will, in, in the morning, in the, in the morning of a Sunday to, the, to have everything out by Monday, I will make up to 75 meals, but I will have, I will have a plan. And pretty much, if that, if, if we have in chicken, all that chicken get clean, it get portion divided. In your case, you will always want to have like seven pieces. If you're taking some for lunch, or if you people, two people are eating lunch, then you have eight pieces. You know, six for consumption, two for lunch the next day. And I will make a bigger, a bigger division on the tray, and, and season it, and, and it to go that way. You may have, you know, you may have to spend more oven time because that big of a portion require both up and down or, but I will put it next to each other, a larger tray and, and do it that way. Yeah. And like the mashed potatoes, I will, you know, and you can actually trick your children into, within the family. And I do it at home. It's kind of like a, like a secret, but they're like, oh, oh cheesy potato. So I make regular potatoes, right? So like, like what I showed you today. And then I make cheesy potatoes, huh. the same potatoes, okay? <laughs> but in the middle, I put a layer of cheese. Now you could take those same potatoes that I gave you and make it into a shepherd's pie. Mm -hmm. So you put a little bit of butter or spray pan, right? On any little tray, any like little, if it's just for you or somebody else, you could actually, remember, you could cook in little portion, especially, you know, like the loaf of bread that you make the little rectangular ones. Mm -hmm. If it's just, if the kids don't want it, you so the same mashed potato you put in them, then you take it and then you do whatever is fitting. It could be, you know, if you are vegan or, or the one of meat protein, then you could make like a whole concussion of mushroom, peppers, uh, zucchini, saute all that, a little bit of spray or butter on the bottom, line of potato, your veggies. It could be ground chicken, ground anything, or it could even be shredded chicken. You want to get fancy, do shrimp. Saute your shrimp. Chop them into little pieces, mm -hmm. throw it there. If you want cheese, you put cheese. If not, you put more veggie. Another layer of the same cheesy potatoes, go on it and then cheese on top. And you will have shepherd pie. The potatoes you use to serve a fancy fish meal, you could use them, the same potatoes, to do a shepherd pie. The same potatoes, you could actually just use them and for like potatoes, cheese, potato cheese. And when they cut through, it's like, wow, oh my God. Same potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But, but that's kind of how you do it. And it's the same thing, like this rice, we have white rice, right? So I recommend the white rice. You can make Chinese rice out of that white rice. And, and, and you know, you, you probably have seen this, right? So that same white rice that you give them today, you make a larger portion, then the next day you could either freeze it, white rice freeze very well, or you could just put it, if you know you're gonna consume it pretty fast, you put it on the, on the other side. The next day you scramble three eggs, you chop a few peppers, onions, right? You have ham, you do that. Or you have shrimp, you want to get fancy with shrimp, something like that. A bag of frozen peas and, and carrots. Throw it out. 
You put, doesn't have to be a wonk. If you have one, hey, fancy. But you <laughs> take a non a non-stick pan, you put a, you put your rice there. Okay? And then to the rice you add the I, I like to use the amino, the coconut amino, right? Yes. But you could use, you know, from brack, so you could just use soy sauce. Amino healthier, but you could also use regular soy sauce. You put some of your soy sauce, a little bit of sesame oil to the rice, you toss it a little bit. Then you add a scrambled egg, you toss it a little bit. Then you add those onions and peppers that you chop a little, toss it again. Then if you want to add ham to it, a little cube ham, or if you want to add shrimp to it, you add that, then you piece an onion, toss it. You will have the best Chinese rice ever. And it's the same white rice that you had that you ate the day before, but now it became fried rice. And if you and have like a packet on store for like fried rice seasoning, I personally, I think with the sesame oil, the pure sesame oil, it's pretty strong, so you just need a little bit of drizzle to it. But that and, um, and the amino soy sauce is delicious. Then you make, it's great fried rice right there. And if you have the picadillo, you could just toss it with like the ham and the egg and the soy sauce, put a portion from them away, and then you add the other good stuff for the rest of the people in the house. So it's just a matter of knowing how to use it. And then, like this rice, this rice will never go to waste at home. We take this rice, we get some peppers, right? Take the, the whole pepper. You take the whole pepper. I will mix this rice. I will chop the chicken a little bit smaller. In a bowl, I will mix rice, chicken. If you like to consume um, cheese, toss some cheese into it. You make that mixture. You take a whole pepper. It could be poblano pepper. It could be the regular bell pepper. You stuff it. Okay, you could put a little bit sour cream on top of it, right? Sour cream, yeah, sour cream. A little, yeah. And then put it in the oven. And you have stuffed pepper. You don't have to throw the rice away. You will make stuffed peppers. So this, it's just a matter of, and I, and I recommend for you ladies that are so busy, instead of spending more time on Instagram, Spend it on Pinterest. <laughs> Pinterest have no. Pinterest have a lot of idea, and actually, I, you know, I tell my customers, I say, you know, you don't know what to do with the rice. Just type on top of it like um, leftover rice meals, or like, you know, rice and whatever you have. You know, rice and zucchini. You could stuff zucchini. It doesn't have to be pepper. If you don't care for pepper, you could stuff zucchinis too. You could just take, you know, you take the center of the zucchini a little bit. And I use the, the filling, I chop it up and I mix it with my meat and then use the rice. Use what you have left over, fill them up, oven, done. Wow. That's really good. Yeah. But yeah. the key is planning it. Planning it. Yes. Yeah. Plan. And Plan. again, I, I said this, if I was not there, I would not, $137. Yeah. And like 59 cents. And then the change is negligible. But, <laughs> and we have mm -hmm. how much left over? And we still have leftovers. Yeah. 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 So and you still have it. like tortillas to be used for, and this, you know, this could be breakfast, you know, and, and that was, I was going to mention really quick, and I say to her too, butter, you put this on your butter, you take your butter, you know, let it, let it get a little bit soft, if you don't, you could buy it too, the garlic butter, but I recommend you soften your butter, you mash some garlic, make, have a wholesome garlic butter for your veggies, onions, peppers, the green beans, it's, the flavor is going to blow your mind, and you're going to want to make it more often, with that same delicious butter with a piece of bread, Put it there and put your toast there. Toast it both ways, right? <laughs> then smash a whole avocado, okay? Or hummus. Then put a fry egg on top of it. Ooh, oh. Then be fancy and sprinkle some everything bagel. You don't have to go to the restaurant to do this. Do it for yourself at home. Your children don't want it? Sit right next to them with your fancy meal and let them see it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It just, it just a matter of but it's as simple as that, you know, and the same thing. You take this tortilla, you scramble some eggs, mm -hmm. and you can make a delicious wrap. You can make a taco, and then, you know, you, you chop tomatoes, peppers, and, you know, get, you know, get a little guy, you get the chopper. You know, I use the chopper at home, and pretty much you take an onion, you put it through the chopper, a pepper, <clears throat> and then you chop some cilantro. Make yourself a pickle. If, mm -hmm. if you're not going to consume it all at once, then I recommend put them in separate simple bag or little containers and mix it as you want it. But you take onions, tomato, and then the cilantro. Those are your three ingredients. But then you could spice it up with a can of corn, with a can of green beans. The green beans, not green beans, right? Black beans. <laughs> um, but those have to be washed. 
Okay, so put it rinse and, and kind of dry. Wait, 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 you rinse the beans out of the can? Yeah. For for the black ones, to, like if you're going, if you're gonna make make something else, oh. if you're gonna make salsa <laughs> with it. Yeah. But what I mean, these three ingredients of, of the tomato, the onions, and the cilantro, you could keep it separate. But then one day you could just set up with corn and black beans, or just black beans, and the seasoning, you know, a little lemon, garlic, the powder, onion powder, garlic powder, salt pepper. Toss it up, and, and you have salsa any day of the week. But you could have it on your breakfast taco, right? Mm -hmm. So you put some of you, you know, it just, it's a matter of kind of having what, you know, what you have at home and just kind of reinvent it. Because you go to the restaurant, you pay $15 for an avocado toast when you can make one at home for $3, honestly. <laughs> All the time. You buy a nice avocado for 68 cents. You buy the same bread, you know, for a couple of dollars. You could have 20 avocado toast with less than $10. Yes. So I just go, I make the breakfast burrito put all kinds of stuff and my kids sit there like, eh, what is that you eat, eh? And finally now that I keep asking, oh, this is so good, I'm like, can I taste mm -hmm. this? Yes. Yeah, two of my daughters are starting to like it. Yes. <laughs> I have, now they don't like all the spinach and all the stuff I put in, but like with the egg and some of the veggies. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's a, it's a matter of modeling for our, for our children. I do have, you know, I, I didn't mention it, but my son is considered to be on the spectrum, so they're very picky eaters. And even just him looking at you eating, he's like, whoa. Yeah. But I said to him, we gotta try something new. Listen, I dislike cucumber with the biggest passion in my heart, but he consumed them. I'm not gonna make ugly faces. So whenever your child is like, ooh, ooh, ooh you just like, oh, I love it. I'm going to eat it because I, I want him to eat his stuff too. Yeah. And even though I dislike it, I don't make faces for him. So I cut his cucumber really pretty and his pepper and I make a whole rainbow for him and the salt and the pepper. But we have to model for our children even though we dislike it or even though when they like it, we're going to be like, mm, this is so good. You know, you want to try? Just continue. Keep insisting and eventually they will see your love for food. But if they see us not being good, we model about like, ooh, ooh, ooh. They, they're going to behave the same way. Honestly, they will. Yeah. Speaking of the children, if you keep hearing noises, it's because they're upstairs. So we said no kids, but you know, those of us who have kids on the show, they're here upstairs. And we're going to bring them down because I keep saying my daughter is Lucy. From I Love Lucy, they she's like, I want to be on the show. I'm going to be yeah, on the show. So I'm going to go up and get her. And we're going to wrap it up. So if you have any more questions any more for questions? Chef, I'm going to go get the kids so they can yeah. be on the show. <laughs> when I want you to all know, you know, I'm, I'm, a, it's very, it's very, I'm very accessible. I don't know. I may not answer you like, immediately but go into my dm send me a, you have any question any idea anything that you thinking you know i mean my mindful eat ceo you will find me on instagram or, or facebook i will answer you any question i will help you find recipes and you know if you want any collaboration so i am i'm available for that you know i i, I it's my pleasure serving you and any questions that you have or idea feel free to contact me I have a food truck coming up soon, I'm so, so <laughs> that is, you know, the big baby will be coming out soon, and you know, it's, it's the same concept, it's the clean yeah. eating, the, the flavor food, meals going on, and we're going to be pretty international coming out there, so, international and pretty, so, yeah. just follow me around, and here they come. We got princess number one. There we go. Hi, Kizzy. And then we got princess number two. What's your name? Ooh, princess number three. What's your name? You gotta look at the camera that way. Ooh, princess number four. Look at the camera. Say your name. There we go. Princess number five. Look at the camera. Those are our future CEOs. Obviously, that one's mine. Well, it's my pleasure being here with you. If you have any questions, let me know. Just reach out online, and I'd be more than happy to serve you. Thank you. Say thank you for Thank you. And I think our audience had a great time yes. today. It's our first live audience of the day, or second live audience of the day, but first full ever. live audience, first ever. Yeah. And make sure you guys go to fromdaystoyears.com. Make sure you share, like. Yes. We're on Instagram, Facebook, 
So YouTube, TikTok, 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 YouTube. TikTok. Oh, we always forget YouTube. I got YouTube. I got YouTube. <laughs> and make sure you follow Chef Mindful Eats .co. Also, Mindful Eats on Instagram, Mindful Eats on Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. And um, just tell your friends. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye.